What's going on guys? Vic VP back with another Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, we're going to do a couple of quick looks. Frets on Fire, MAM 4 player arcade setup, and Eugene requested it. We're going to do a little bit of aim track utility kind of configurations. Uh, so really cool, Frets on Fire is a new addition. It's, it's really cool. If you look up like YouTube videos, it's basically user-created playlist. It's just like Guitar Hero. But it's songs that you wouldn't find on Guitar Hero. Literally, people just sit and make you know the game pretty playable. Uh, really cool stuff. It's 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 new. There's about maybe uh, twenty five to thirty separate wheels. Um, basically, you know, some of them are divided into like you know Pink Floyd, or if you want to do um, Red Hot Chili Peppers. So it's like this specific one will have basically all Red Hot Chili Pepper songs and such. Um, for the purpose, I'm gonna have to mute the songs. Um, but I just want to show it off real quick. Um, there's just like one minor little thing that you have to do into the settings, uh, but it's nothing major. But the cool thing with this is that it does utilize the keyboard. Um, basically, it's using the F1 to F5 keys and the enter key as the guitar. So literally, like if you were standing up, it would literally look like you were playing the guitar. Pretty cool idea. Um, the other way you could do it is that you could get an Xbox 360 guitar. Um, I would probably recommend that or a Wii guitar, but we do have an Xbox dongle, so it would easily sync up. You would just have to go into the settings and just assign the buttons to it. Um, but I'll be honest, these those guitars aren't cheap. They're like 180 bucks, so it's up to you if you want to go ahead and get that. But uh, I'll just real quick launch one um, just to show you, you know, what it looks like and, and how it plays and stuff. So there is a couple. Uh, we'll do this one for now. Guitar Hero on Tour. I'm just pressing enter on the keyboard. You could use the arcade sticks. You could use the Xbox controller to navigate. But in this, you do need the keyboard. Uh, the big thing to understand about this is that it's basically it's one emulator, um, but it's set up into 30 separate folders. Because uh, as you can see, we have different you know executables, meaning we have different types. Pink Floyd, the Red Hot Chili Peppers. So the big thing real quick, whenever you launch one, you just want to make sure that your paths are correct. For Eugene, these are correct, but they might change. So it's just a quick thing to kind of look at. Uh, basically, again, using the arrow keys on the keyboard to navigate, we're going to go to options. I'm going to go to set list settings and just change the set list path just to make sure it's in the right way. So basically, this one here, this guitar here on tour, it's always going to be like the game that you pick. It's going to show that title. So just press enter and then press accept folder. That's it. Uh, we use basically F1 and F2, F1 to F5. So F2 is like my back. I'm going to go up. I'm going to do career. So I press F1. I'll do, whoops, I want to do guitar. Yes, default guitar. And you could do like drums too and such. So uh, basically, it's just like Guitar Hero. You will play like your songs. Uh, I'm going to just pick a random song. You could pick if you want to do guitar or bass. And I'm going to go easy because medium, to me, it's just so difficult. Uh, I'll start it just so you could hear how it starts with music. And then I'm going to mute it. So again, utilizing F1 to F5 and the enter key to strum. So as you can see, I'm literally pressing it. Cool, right? So I'll mute it. So, same thing, just like Guitar Hero, holding down the keys. There's no whammy bar. <laughs> oh, here I go. So, I'm just going to mute that real quick so I don't get any, uh, you know, bands and stuff. But basically, again, this is set to easy. I was watching the stream capture, which is like a millisecond off. I should have been actually watching the actual screen. Uh, but basically, there's no escaping out of this. You just kind of have to fail. So, if you just keep pressing enter, you can see like a rock. Meter's going down. I failed. Now I'm basically in the menu. Uh, I'll show you real quick. I'll do another one. Um, basically in medium mode. Uh, we'll do a, a, I don't know, 
Again, you won't find these songs on real Guitar Hero, but Medium Mode is just like it, it, it's it's kind of it's tough. And I've seen people play Expert. Like I can't figure out how they do that. But again, gonna keep the music muted and just a, a really cool feature. I mean, it's definitely awesome, especially if you're like into like Guitar Hero. The song I was playing before it actually went into like the four keys. So again. Really cool. I mean, it's awesome. It's a it's very small of a file too. The it's just a music file that kind of take up, but definitely a cool little thing. So again, right now I'm just messing up on purpose so the rock meter will fall out. I'll get the you failed, and then we just exit out like a normal PC program. So quit, quit, and then we will be back into hyperspin. There you go. That's it. That is Guitar Hero, or I should say, Frets on Fire. So right now, real quick, I'm just going to breeze through uh, MAM, MAME, whatever you want to call it. Uh, my wheel, there's three MAME arcades. I kind of made a, an explanation last time of it. Um, basically, the main ROM is my original file where I took out all the duplicates. So for example, there was Street Fighter, Street Fighter 2 Champion Edition. Then there's Street Fighter 2 Champion Edition Asia, Japan, Europe, USA, World. So basically, it's the same game times five. Um, what happened though is that I had somebody purchase a drive and they had, um, they, they didn't have like the golden T working. So I noticed that basically me removing a couple of those duplicates actually kind of messed up some of the other games. Cause some games are called parent ROMs. You do need a parent ROM to run the clone ROM. So it's all technical from there. So basically main ROMs, if I go into it, you're going to see like in this list, as you could see, there's no duplicates. It's pretty clean. But the big thing, and a lot of people are going to argue it, especially people that know like their, um, you know, MAM arcade stuff. Um, there is essentially a way in Hyper HQ to set only parent ROMs to show off. And I've noticed so far for maybe three systems, you enabling that actually removes other games. Um, so, for example, in all honesty, this one here has the parent ROMs enabled, it doesn't show duplicates. But again, it would remove some games, like you would, you would be missing games. So if I go back and go into all ROMs, I have that as the entire MAM arcade library open. Not just showing parent ROMs, it's showing everything. So as you can see real quick, like we can see this X-Men, you see how many X-Men there are? You got a Euro, we got Hispanic, we got Hispanic, we got Japan, we got Japan, different versions and stuff. So on this one here, you're going to find there's 9,000 ROMs on this. And again, just to be safe, I, this one, you, you just have to have it like this. Yes, you'll be going nuts going down the list. Um, but if I go, for example, like Golden T, I'll go to G, I'll hold down. Yes, you will find duplicates in this. This is all ROMs. Because also another thing I did notice is that some of the parent ROMs, like you might launch it and it might not launch. So... It's better off, if anything, to go into the, this main, the all ROMs wheel and just find another game. So I haven't tested all 9,000 games. Let's be real. Nobody has. It's just something to think about and such. So if I go real quick, I'm trying to find like Golden T. See, like we have a couple of Golden Ts. Got Golden Par. That's not Golden T. So we got Golden T97. And right now it doesn't show you the actual ROM name because I removed it. But like this would be like Golden T97U. This is Golden Team 97E. So it's just these did need um, the other stuff basically to work with it. So what I learned is that for MAM Arcade, it's just easier to give you all 9,000 ROMs. And this way it does work. So if Golden T, if this one doesn't launch, then this one most likely will launch. So again, I could launch one real quick just for, 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 for shits and giggles. And it launched. So... You know, all these will launch. I have, I'm using the Xbox control right now, so I'll just exit out by holding. Uh, what am I going to hold? Nothing, actually. I'm sorry. This is set to regular MAME, so I do need to use the arcade sticks exit. Uh, just a quick thing Joy to Key is not active on that for MAME arcade. I have it set to the specific buttons. Now, real quick, talking about four player. So the four player one, I sat down tested each game there was originally 132 games three of them 
were on the list, but they weren't at all four player. It was a two player game, so I removed it. Now all these games are a hundred percent four player. To, it's either three player or four player. Some games are not four player; they're three player. So I'll fix up again the artwork and the video files and stuff. But as of right now, all of these will launch. So I'm gonna see right now. I do want to do one that's four player. I'm just gonna turn on again. I have two. Xbox controllers. That's another thing, real quick. I set this MAME MAM uh, emulator setup as player one is always arcade stick one, player two is arcade stick two, gamepad one is player three, gamepad two is player four. So if you were going to wanting to play, let's say, with four Xbox controllers, in reality, it's not configured like that. It's a quick configuration that I could show you if you ever need that. Uh, it's very easy, but right now I'm going to launch a four player game. So this is actually a, a knockoff. This is Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles. That's actually not the right ROM I want to launch, but it's TMNT, but it's like a knockoff version. Uh, I'm, I'm also going to exit out, but just want to show you full screen on it. Again, I'm pressing select. This is player four. I'm pressing select. This is player two, player three. I mean, arcade stick player one, and then you'll be ready to play. So. Again, I have all that four-player configured. Right now, I do need to hit the exit button on the actual arcade stick. That's how I have it set up. It's on the arcade stick itself. So, for example, like another thing I did notice as far as a pre-made wheel, um, I'll fix the artwork again. It had the Simpsons ROM. Uh, it had it as like a weird Simpsons ROM name, the Simpsons 4PA, and that one didn't launch. So I had to wind up going into the database and adjusting accordingly so that these things do run. So again, literally spent maybe about four hours just launching a hundred games just to make sure they work. So again, Xbox controllers, I could use the arcade stick to start. Just again, a big thing, I do have to use the arcade stick to exit out. That's the only thing. I mean, again, I have it set up like that. Uh, people that are interested in four player control panels, MAM Arcade, I don't have set the joy to key. I, I just don't have it like that. Some people do. I personally don't, if you want to play with the inputs and mess up, you know, change the controllers, you have to go into MAME Arcade to fix that. So, uh, MAME Emulator, I mean. Uh, other than that, though, uh, this is cool. This is all set for players. Again, some of the artwork I just have to kind of fix up. And other than that, it's, it's a pretty easy fix. Now, the last thing real quick I want to discuss, because Eugene did ask it. He asked me, hey, Vic, if I buy another aim track gun, what is the steps for me to do that to configure it? It's really easy. I would probably rather team viewer in to help you with that. So what you'll do is that you'll come into the search bar right here and you'll just look up Ultimark or Aim Track. ULT is all I put. And then you'll see here the Ultimark Aim Track. Um, give it a second for the utility to pop up. Uh, and it's really easy. Uh, so basically right here we have all the devices. So again, you could do up to eight devices on this, eight guns. Um, just remember for me, Device 1 is player 2. Device 2 is player 1. That's just how I have mine set up and such. So let's just say player 1's gun exploded into a million pieces, and now you have a new gun to recalibrate it. We're going to plug in the aim track, and basically you're going to go into setup here. With the gun plugged in, you're going to do set ID to 2. Again, player 1 is ID 2. Player 2 is ID 1. I know it's complicated. Just, again, call me. I'll help you with it. Basically, you do set ID to 2, and then you press OK. Once you're done with that, you go into configuration. Just be sure you're on your right device. So you should be on device 2 if you're replacing player 1. And then you press calibrate. When you press calibrate, you're going to need to shoot the top left of your screen. You're going to need to shoot the top right and bottom middle of the screen. That's really it. Other than that, that's, that's, that's honestly all it is. All right, guys, so real quick, I just wanted to show you, just because I real quickly did it, I added the artwork um, for the four players. Out of 128 games, I think there's only three of them that don't have artwork. So, for example, this one is TMHT. This is a knockoff of TMNT. Um, so I just real quickly spent about maybe 20 minutes just kind of adjusting that. Okay, so, you know, I figure a lot of people are going to want four player, especially with control panels. So this right here is all set. Uh, real quick, one last thing I want to make a note of, and uh, I'm even shocked by it. I even said it in my past videos way back that it was impossible to emulate Marvel vs. Capcom 2, and I am dead wrong. 
because it's not a MAM emulation. It's Sega Naomi. So I just want to show this off real quick as yes, I officially have. This is Marvel vs. Capcom 2. This is the actual ROM. Again, I'll fix up the artwork, but Marvel vs. Capcom 2, I'm going to launch this. And again, I have basically Sega and Naomi set up for the arcade sticks. And uh, basically, again, it's just after you do so much research, Marvel vs. Capcom 2, finally. I mean, it has been emulated. I just had no idea about it until, uh, you know, you read up on a couple of forums and stuff. And in the past, I mean, probably years ago, I used to say Marvel vs. Capcom was never emulated. And I was dead wrong. <laughs> so, I'm just going to bump the volume a little bit. So again, this right now using the arcade sticks to my side. I am not sitting perfectly straight. So I'm just going to go along this. Again, Sega Naomi. Naomi, Naomi. And this is like amazing emulation. I used to spam cable with the handgun all day. <laughs> and let's see if I could do... I'm a little bit... I need to put the... I'm too far. <laughs> I'm too far to do the... Correct, there you go. That's a super. So awesome stuff. Again, utilizing the arcade sticks. I'll be able to escape out and such. And there you have it. That is Marvel vs. Capcom 2. A lot of games added with this emulator. Um, I think I even saw some Capcom. Let's see. Okay, so, yes, yeah, so you have Capcom for SNK and such. So again, have to just fix up the video files on that, but so far, so good.